In this video, we will talk about the chat characteristics of free chat GPT. Why? Because OpenAI is improving the system, it is incorporating new models and these features change. In 2024, free GPT chat uses the GPT-40 and GPT-4 mini models. Thus, we now have the newer or more advanced models in theory with a limited number of accesses and it decides if it is the 4, O, or the fourth mini which is more limited, but we already have access to newer models. We are not in the GPT-3.5 as initially. We also have a window of 128,000 total tokens. That is that between the input and the output there are no longer 4,000 tokens that were about 3,000 words. But we have about 200 pages, 240 pages that between input and output are enough to analyze large documents. Here we have another of the news that is that you can upload files, it can also search the internet, it also understand images and also executing code. All these features that used to be the paid version and which in theory are limited as opposed to the paid version, but well, I have been able to use them without problems. The training data is, at the time of recording this video, up to October 2023, and into the future, which has already arrived, they said that it was going to incorporate the new model that has released OpenAI that is called O1 Mini, but with very few features or interactions. They have released the model O1 Preview that can be used in the paid version and the O1 Mini and here they let us use the O1 Mini. Let's see also the limitations. For example, it invents things because the GPT models are designed to satisfy the user's response, and if there is something it doesn't know, then it invents it. I have had instances where Chat has invented bibliography, with book titles and authors. Therefore, you always have to check the answer. Then, what is uploaded is used to learn by default. Before, the free version didn't guarantee that they wouldn't use it. Now there is a way to disable the use by default. But I recommend not using confidential or personal data in the free chat, though it already gives you the option to disable it, and then it's not that good with math. Let's move to a screen with the GPT chat. Notice that it asks me if I want to pay, and if I do not it selects chat, auto doesn't tell me which one it will be. And then it may use the O1 mini as alpha, as alpha test and then here I can do a temporary chat. This temporary chat is deleted from the records of OpenAI after 30 days. Here I have all the chats I've done before to be able to access to them. I can do a new chat and I can access to GPT that others have done. I will explain what that is. So that we can see the image aspect. We can click here and tell it to create an illustration of a pet. Then it asks you whatever, race, color, size. Make a green dog. Big. Let's see if it creates the image. Meanwhile we wait you see here a clip. Here I can attach files, connect to Google Drive, connect to OneDrive, both personal and professional or load from the computer, and then tell it to do some things to that file. Here's the picture it made for me in Twad. Well more things. I can tell it, although I don't have connected the audio right now, at the time of making the video, to read what it has generated in text, I can copy it, I can tell it whether the answer has been adequate or not so that it learns and change the model it will use. Notice that it is doing it with GPT-40, which is the best it has in production, with which we can't access the mini. It is doing it with the best one they have, although this can change, since the system chooses it. With this button, I go to the end of the generated prompt, and with this button to transmit a prompt. A prompt is what I ask. I click here to run it. Well, more things I want to tell you, this of the GPT is that if you have the paid version you can create GPT, you can enter chat GPT a prompt, or a text from system and to interact with others taking into account what it says that system text. With the free version, you can't create them, but they can be used. Here, I have done with a paid version, an English trainer, a trainer of business English at the Beatwo level, 
and then you can speak with it. It says who it is, it's a project manager and language student with level 2 and then it answers you with the prompt that I have put in the page. Here it cannot be done. Let's talk about what can you do here. Well, here I open a new chat, I can also do it there with the GPT chat and here I have the settings. I can view my GPTs, where I can make a chat, I can search for GPTs that others have created and use them, consensus has made one, PDF has another one, etc. In these GPTs you can put one system prompt. You can also upload files so that it answers only according to those files and you can also connect with external programming interfaces such as consensus so that they return the data given by other systems. Here, as you see, I cannot create. I would have to put the plus. But I can use the ones others have made. I can customize my chats by putting information about me and how I would like it to respond and this will apply to all chats if I don't disable it here, to all new chats. So apart from what I put in the chat, the prompt that I put it will apply at what I put here if I want to give it guidance my conversation with chat GPT. Then I also have the configuration here, in general I have the theme, if I want it dark, light, if I want to show the code when it's used in data analysis this is interesting because, as I was saying, chat GPT, where I have it, I have it here, no, I have it here, one moment, I'm going to show you, histogram. This feature was at first exclusive for the paid version but now you can ask it to create a random data set of machine downtime and present a histogram about it. This is what it does is, it generates a code in a programming language, usually Python, and then executes it and outputs the result, OK, so here it has generated the data and then provided the result. I can ask chat GPT to always display the code or I can click here, this one icon where it shows me the code it has used. Well, a part of that, I have this button here to share a chat, it gives me a URL with which I can send to another colleague or a colleague to see it. And this is also within the settings, OK, we have here in personalization, sorry, in general we have the language that is automatic, what we do with archive chats if we want archive all the chats or if we want to delete everything. Here in personalization, I tell it how I want it to manage memory if you notice here, which I have already shown. I have the message that it has appeared when I started. It's that chat GPT now has memory and remembers what I've written from one chat to another and uses it for improving the responses. This is incompatible with the fact that chat GPT it does not use our data for training. But if we don't mind we allow it, it will start remembering what we write, and we'll apply it when we talk to him. And this is where we manage that memory. This is where we select among the voices it has, which voice we will use when we want it to read something to us. The data control that I told you before, look by default it is activated to everyone. I have already disabled it, but I can tell it to disable it and therefore it doesn't use my data for training. Here I manage the shared links I have generated. I can export the data or delete the account. Then everything else I have, the connected apps, security if I want to use multi-factor, so it sends me an email or a text message to the mobile to enter, apart from the password. If I can close the sessions between the devices, these two things are more advanced, the constructor profile, which are applications to link, that for the free version do not have a lot of sense. Well, with this I end the video where I have talked about the characteristics of GPT in 2024, its limitations and we've seen them.